Hello guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe, comment or like. That is going to help the channel a lot to grow and bring new content for you. Uh, today I wanted to talk about toxic habits when you are working by yourself and you're trying to open a business. But I tried to record that subject so many times, so actually I'm going to refer to a really awesome artist and I'm going to put the link on the description below so you can check it out and take some tips but basically as anyone opening a business you end up working much more than someone that has a fixed job with a company right now i have stuff to do six to seven days a week if i don't watch myself I end up doing seven days a week every single week and what happens that it can be really exhausting and as an artist, you need to be able to produce creative stuff. So it's really important that you take a healthy speed and a health chronogram when you are working on that. So you don't get to a point where you are so stressed that you are not able to do anything later on. And that's just going to be feeding up the cycle. Well, how I manage it is was by making a checklist, making an agenda. I tried to make a three-week cycle because I had to make sure that when I finished that cycle, I was going to have at least one painting by week and one video by week edited. And between that, I would have to have time to make a video for TikTok, make, make the edition of the picture for Instagram and TikTok I'm actually posting more than once a week but that's because the content there it's a little bit different from Instagram I think there is more space to be more open each do different stuff and even have some fun with some videos that are not actually about painting but about the preparation of the painting actually I want to just stress out a little bit more the subject of the list first of all make a list Second, attribute a time limit for each activity. Select the best time for each in order to guarantee the best productivity. Know the priority for every item. And if you cannot do it all during the time that you wanted to do, choose the one with the highest priority on the list to work first. I'm going to explain some of the elements that I have on my list. Yours could be simpler or could be actually more complicated. At mine, I have time for research and this includes a lot of things like what options I have for stores, what is a good thing to do or not, what tools should I explore, what tool should I use to edit videos. Everything that I do, I first have to research. Training. And here it comes the part of the technique. Even though I'm doing it for a long time, for example, curly hair, I just had to stop and do a crash course in the middle of the painting, and there are several other things that I still have to stop and learn. I have to take the time to paint and stream, to record for YouTube, that is a little bit different, to make the TikTok record the clips, the video edit, that's going to be for YouTube and TikTok, and those are two different things, take pictures and edit, Prepare the posts for YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest. Do some marketing on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Search for challenges that are still a part of marketing. Scan the paintings that I complete. Photoshop it for imperfections. And then update on the store. And there are other tasks that are temporary but I had to go through recently. That is to set up new tools and profiles like the store, Twitch, TikTok and others. Research on the viability and setup of those tools because it doesn't mean that because you have a lot of things out there, everything is going to be viable. From um, many POD stores on the market, after that viability study, I decided to start with Redbubble. And as a first time uploader, I had to redo a lot of the work even though I thought I did my homework well. It took me 16 hours to add 8 designs but next time I think it's going to be much faster because I did have to redo a lot of things. Also because of the COVID it's not delivering to South America 
and that's really sad because I am from Brazil and I would like my products to get there. And not just that, as dollars are so expensive for people in, in Brazil and I would assume that for many other countries in South America. With the shipping, from what I was checking about the places where they print, the closest place that they print something is the United States. That means that the price of the shipping is going to be the price of the product, if not more. And I'm not really happy with that, so I am looking for another options that are in Brazil. Anyway, I am really happy with this piece of work. I find working with blue delicious. I, I, I feel that it's so calming. I like because blue can go really dark without changing the color because there are some colors that you really have to transform to something else to be able to get a darker tone but with blue you can go really dark and you can go really light and it can still be beautiful I would say that it felt really easy to paint this one it was one of the fastest paintings that I finished and to me I think it is my favorite because it it really looks so smooth, it really looks so nice, the skin. I am working on two other pieces and I'm, I must say that this one looks better than the next one probably it's going to look like. I don't know what happened, but I feel really proud about it. I did a red one that is like red earth color. I love that one too. It was easy to between the colors because I was able to get the dark tones and light tones easily. And the next ones that I'm working are in yellow and green. And probably I'm going to do one in brown too and then I close the collection. Uh, I am still thinking about a name for that collection. I took note of a few ones but I don't remember now the one that was my favorite. But it has been really fun to work in a collection. I actually learned something very interesting. That is, I thought, okay, I already have all the pictures that I did once and I changed my view during the, the painting and I decided to get some other ladies to paint because I started making those ladies that had the hair either on a braid or updo or something like that and they had straight hair. And then I decided to do, do one with curly hair and it takes a lot more of space and it in, ended up cutting a lot of edges that I didn't want to. So a lesson learned for me for a next collection, even though it looks like I have space enough, you leave a lot more of space because even though you play in it, you have to have the chance to change your idea if you feel a sudden inspiration. And what happened was exactly that. First, I had just selected pictures that I didn't like and I wanted to paint. And then I, I had an inspiration of an idea to go with that collection. And it didn't go out so well for the drawing once I tried to put different ladies in there. And if you're going to leave more space, it's even good because the client can choose how much of free, free space they want to leave it and it can be more custom for them. Well, I think I already spoke way too much here. I'm sorry for the long talking. I'm going to check for the link from Happy Day Artists about toxic habits. And I am going to put here in the description. And I hope I didn't bore you too much with what I was saying. And that you guys have a good week. Oh, I always forget to do that marketing part, but it's necessary. Please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.